Hi everyone, this is Himanshu from AdTech. Um, I work as a DevOps engineer. And uh, today's webinar is on Git Essentials with Atlassian Tools. And before we get started into the contents of the webinar, I will present a brief overview about AdTech and about Atlassian and some of the topics that the webinar today is going to cover. So let's get started. So let's first uh, briefly introduce AdTech. So who is AdTech? Um, AdTech is a company that specializes in software configuration. Uh, we have been around for more than seven years now. And uh, we are also officially recognized as Atlassian experts. And as Atlassian experts, we offer various services uh, around Atlassian tools. Uh, we have a managed hosting service for Atlassian tools uh, that we call Code Factory. Uh, one of the key specializations that we possess is working in the area of uh, build automation, deployment automation, and implementing continuous integration and continuous deployment processes. We also customize various Atlassian tools ranging from creating different kinds of add-ons to customizing the tools themselves. Um, we also specialize in creating uh, various kinds of agile workflows. And in, in general, we perform any kind of consultation around uh, Atlassian tools services and utilizing them for your developer needs. And to give you a brief idea of some of the solutions that we work on, um, one example that we are proud of is we have created a torrent-based deployment solution. So um, in this solution, what we do is we manage to achieve a more efficient way of deploying to hundreds and thousands of servers by using the approach where initially you would uh, deploy to one seed server, which in turn would deploy to three seed, three other servers in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, and each in turn would again deploy to three other servers. So what we have uh, is it's a basically a process that somewhat resembles a nuclear fission process, and we achieve a chain reaction um, in a very efficient and peer-to-peer -peer man manner in order to deploy to numerous servers in a very fast and efficient way. And we avoid a lot of the bottlenecks that come up when we, when traditionally we, uh, the de deployment is done in a central manner. Next, um, who is Atlassian? Uh, again, I, I assume that a lot of our attendees today might already be familiar with Atlassian, but uh, if not, uh, they are most well known uh, as the creators of Jira and Confluence. But uh, in general, they specialize in creating software that uh, empowers collaboration and achieving a more agile process for development teams. So Jira and Confluence might be their most well-known tools, but they also create a host of other um, tools, especially for software development teams. And in today's demo and presentation, we will be going over some of these. Um, they are also recognized as a leader in the software industry by Gartner. And at present, their products are used by more than 30,000 com 30, companies worldwide. And their users range from uh, you know, small startups to all the way through um, the largest enterprise. And then in terms of what we are going to cover in today's webinar is we want to talk about how can you make your development process more agile? Um, how can you engage in code reviews? How can you create automated builds and deployments and also tie it with automated tests? And what do you get out of this process is our, uh, by creating this kind of development workflow, you would be able to achieve more reliable releases. Uh, you will spend less time troubleshooting your development process and your workflow. 
uh, you will gain a higher level of traceability um, and you will also see how convenient it is to get a lot of the reporting by tying into Git and the various Atlassian tools that will assist you in your development process. And the way we will achieve this is by going over different tools from Atlassian. Um, we'll be mainly going over tools like Stash. Um, then it will tie into the Jira issue tracker. And more specifically, we will use Jira from a more agile perspective uh, because we will be using the, the interface offered by Jira Agile, which is a agile project management add-on for Jira. And overall, the goal is uh, to show you also a quick demo um, of what kind of capabilities you can achieve. And we'll, we'll attempt to do that within a pretty short demo. Uh, but before I move on to the demo portion, I'd like to dive in a bit more into the uh, introduction of what Git Essentials is and how it might benefit your development needs. So before we start talking about Git Essentials, let's talk about Git itself. So um, Git is gaining a lot of traction. And if we look at some data around Git adoption, uh, what we have on the screen right now is a graph that compares the adoption rate uh, and compares between uh, two other popular version control systems, which are CVS and Subversion. Now, if we look at the data for uh, the comparison of these version control tools for the last three years, you can see that Git is on a pretty sharp increase. And um, year over year, we see there is a 30% growth in terms of Git adoption, whereas you see the reverse trend for Subversion and CDS, where there are lesser number of uh, users adopting it, whereas the Git adoption is increasing. And the same holds for Git against uh, any other version control tool out there. So, so we can conclude that Git adoption is on the rise. And many companies and users would like to adopt Git uh, into their drop and process. But again, if we take a step back and think about some of the problems that drop and teams are facing, um, they are facing problems and challenges both around Git as well as various other tools. So uh, in this day and age, um, you, any development team would end up using multiple systems for their development needs. So for example, they might be using uh, a tool to plan their development activities. They would have an issue tracker. Uh, then they would have separate tools to, um, in to interface with the version control tool and uh, participate in core reviews. And then you also would have a continuous uh, integration and continuous deployment tool. But all of these are separate tools. And as a developer or a stakeholder, you would need to bounce back and forth uh, between all of these tools in order to even get simple tasks done. And then on the other side, there is also the challenge caused by this, which is the difficulty on, in getting updates. So for example, if you need to find out details about some code changes, you would need to figure out which one of these systems uh, has that piece of information. And then you would waste a lot of time digging into the system and finding the piece of information you're looking for. And then uh, as a stakeholder, you have very less visibility into the actual status of the, uh, of the drop in task in hand. So it makes that challenging as well. And uh, these challenges are further aggravated by the fact that, that uh, teams are now becoming more distributed in nature, where you can have your teams uh, spanning across multiple time zones, which increases the difficulty in collaboration. Uh, so some of these tools may have collaborative features, but the end user experience is not seamless and it's very disconnected. And then, uh, on the other side, there is also a lack of structure because each of these tools would have their own processes defined and you would need to be familiar with the individual processes of, of each tool. And it also um, makes standardization difficult. For example, if you'd like to enforce naming conventions, your build tool might follow a particular naming convention uh, for the uh, builds you set up. 
on the other hand you might have a naming convention associated with the way you name your uh, branches in your version control system but then you would need to customize each tool separately and they don't really tie up with each other on the other side uh, we have companies who have already started using git or are thinking about migrating to git uh, but a lot of them feel that it is a very daunting aspect and uh, they feel it's a scary prospect as well as time consuming uh, and uh, instead of all of the promises of git uh, how it would benefit the drop-in process they feel that it might be causing the opposite kind of reaction where they feel that it's impeding their release cycle because uh, of a lack of a coherent workflow on how you can utilize git into your drop-in process and then uh, on top of git you have some manual processes that you'll find yourself doing over and over again so for example um, in git it is encouraged to branch and merge frequently but then it becomes a very manual and tedious task and um, developers who are new to git also find it very confusing so, so you overall you waste a lot of time with this um, and you will also find yourself spending a lot of time uh, tying git to your build tool or your testing tool um, so ideally we'd like to eliminate all of these problems and git essential is a is an integrated solution from atlassian uh, which takes git as well as the power of all the various atlassian tools to solve a lot of these problems that we are talking about how does it solve the, these issues well it begins by providing an integrated drop-in tool set so the problem we talked about earlier about how each of these tools are disconnected and don't have a seamless user experience uh, git essential solves this problem by providing a seamless user experience across all of these tools and then uh, for stakeholders it also provides complete end-to-end -end traceability you can get all the related information uh, you can for example, you can get the code changes related from Git. You can easily find out the uh, builds and deployment information, and you can tie it to your Jira issues. And as we will see in the demo portion, it, it, it is very uh, seamless and out of the box feature. Um, the other challenge is how do you figure out what are the best practices of using Git? And Git Essential, again, provides out-of-the-box uh, best practices on how you can utilize Git into your development flow. Uh, and it also encourages collaborative development um, because it has features like comments and it provides an easy way to create and participate in code reviews. So this is very useful for teams who might even be distributed and across several time zones, but uh, it doesn't impede in the process of collaborating. And then we will see that it also automates a lot of the uh, mundane and time-consuming tasks that we talked about earlier. So if we summarize uh, Git Essentials in three steps, basically it, it will take us from the step of planning uh, to the step of actually uh, writing and submitting the code. And then in the end, uh, we will tie it to an automated build process which will enable us to ship our product uh, in an easier and faster way. And then in terms of tracking the progress, uh, st any stakeholders in the, pro in the project can easily figure out what is the status of the task, not only in terms of the issue tracking tool, but also in terms of what, what are the Git branches associated, uh, what are the code commits associated, uh, we can also see the related pull requests. Um, the pull requests are basically a way of engaging in code reviews. And uh, this can quickly give us an overview of if, if there are any related uh, pull requests associated and what is the status of those. And then it also ties up to the build system and it will tell us the current build status of the development task. So we get visibility across all of these in a very central manner. So in the uh, case of uh, how we track all of these, uh, 
users don't need to necessarily go to all of these different systems they can stay within jira which is the issue tracking tool and more specifically they can even stay within jira agile which lets them participate in uh, in a more agile way in terms of how they track their project and within jira agile um, we can see that there is a view built in called the dropin panel and the dropin panel will connect to all of these various other tools and bring in the information right into jira and we can see information like uh, what are some of the branches in git associated with a particular uh, task what are some of the code commits uh, and what is the status of the pull request as well as build and deployment so basically uh, jira becomes a single source of truth for getting all of these information in a central place and then we can dive into further details for example if we click on the commits associated it will give us an more in depth overview of the details of those code commits and then we can click on any of these links which will take us uh, to the appropriate tool to show us even more further details and uh, out of the box it has best practice workflows uh, right from the planning phase all the way through development and uh, going all the way up to release so out of the box it empowers developers and development teams with best practice workflows and it also eases the the challenges of git because uh, git branching and merging becomes seamless because it ties into jira agile itself with a single click we're able to create a branch in git and even when we are creating a branch in git it automatically suggests naming convention for the branch based on the branch type and uh, in the demo portion we will see uh, an actual example of how this works and then collaboration becomes seamless as well because once we have created a branch in uh, git with the help of stash we can engage in conversation um, right at the code level we can uh, post a comment on an individual line of code change and the various team members and developers can uh, engage in a conversation before uh, they come to a decision uh, especially regarding code reviews and pull requests and then it also assists with automating manual tasks uh, some of the examples uh, it it saves time by eliminating the tedious task of creating git branches because it just reduces that to a single click and uh, there is also less context switching and it enables developers to focus on the code itself rather than uh, dealing with the intricacies of the multiple systems that they have to deal with um, and it also encourages higher code quality because it brings in the build information right into the source code control tool so if you're browsing the source code changes in stash for example you would be able to see the build status of those changes as well and that assist in higher code quality overall and the end goal always is to enable uh, teams to ship out releases uh, quicker and with less hassle um, it also enables teams to deploy their changes uh, pretty much with a single click so promoting release across environments becomes a uh, uh, process with less errors and uh, again it reduces that to a single click again to summarize why git essentials uh, some of the key points are it provides an integrated dwarf and tool set it provides complete end-to-end -end traceability both to developers as well as stakeholders it has a lot of built-in best practices around git and the various dwarf and tools it empowers teams to engage in collaborative development and uh, it automates a lot of the manual and tedious tasks. So next we will move on to the demo portion of this presentation. Okay, so um, on my screen I have a Jira Agile board open. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, Jira is the issue tracking tool from Atlassian and Jira Agile is 
an add-on from Atlassian that enables teams to work uh, by following various agile methodologies. Uh, there are two options to use Jira Agile. You can either use agile uh, boards based on the Scrum or Kanban uh, methodology. Um, in our case, we are utilizing a Scrum board and uh, both Scrum and Kanban are pretty similar uh, with the major difference that Scrum is based on the idea of sprints, whereas Kanban doesn't have sprints. Uh, right now, we are in the work mode. So both Scrum and Kanban boards in Jira Agile have a similar kind of view where we can see different uh, Jira issues which are under different columns based on the statuses that are mapped to each of these columns. So right now, I have the issue TIS70 selected. So on the Agile board, when I select TIS70, on the right-hand side, uh, I can see the various information about this issue. I can see the issue status, the, uh, the version associated. I can see the reporter and assignee. Uh, but what I'm most interested in right now is the Duopen panel. So if I click on the Duopen panel, uh, I can see some various information that uh, Jira has populated by connecting to the different drop and tools. So for example, I can see that there was one branch created and it was last updated three hours ago. I can see that there are two code commits which were updated around the same time. I can see that there was one pull request created and that was successfully merged. I can also see that there are some builds associated. And um, last but not the least, I can see that the changes related to this particular issue are currently deployed to the QA environment. And if I click on the deployed information, I get some more details like which release number it's part of. And similarly, if I click on the Git branch, it will show me more detailed information about the branch. I can also click on the link displayed and it will take me directly to Stash. Uh, which is the Git management software from Atlassian to dive into more details. And I can seamlessly jump back to Jira. So uh, next, what we will do is in order to give you a better idea of how this would work right from inception all the way to delivery, uh, we will create a sample bug issue and then basically walk you through the entire process of how Git Essential will empower us to uh, engage in our Duopen process in a fine-tuned manner. So I will begin by creating a bug issue in this project. So I'll create an issue. So for summary, I will say that uh, background color of landing page should be blue. Uh, I, I'll assign the issue to me. I'll also fill out some details like the affected version. Um, and then I will proceed to create the issue. And at the top, I also get the notification that I can add it to my current uh, do and sprint. So I'll go ahead and do that. And you will notice that now um, the issue got created with the issue ID TIS73. And currently it's in the to-do status uh, because the status of this issue is open and the open status is mapped to the to-do column on the Agile board. Um, next, as a developer, I would like to begin working on it. So I will drag and drop this issue to the in-progress column. And you will see that now it's in the in-progress state. Um, I, I'd like to start writing the code for uh, fixing this bug. And because I'm using Git, and I'd like to follow the best practice offered by Git Essentials. Uh, I want to work on this particular bug fix in a bug fix branch in Git. And uh, if I want to create the branch, I don't need to go outside of Jira. I can again go back to the Duopen panel and you will see that there is a link to create a branch. So I'll click on that link. Now this will redirect me to uh, Stash, because again, like I mentioned earlier, Stash is the Git management tool from Atlassian. And uh, now you will see that there are some various details uh, related to the branch that we are attempting to create. 
Um, we've selected the branch type as bug fix. I, I can also see that there are various other options, like I can select that this is a feature branch, it's a hotfix branch or a release branch. Um, but in this case, I'll stick to bug fix. And then I'm branching from master. So my source branch is master. And then next to that, you will see that there is a green check mark. And if I click on it, uh, it shows me that the, uh, the current build status of master is that it, it is passing the build. So now you can see the benefit is Stash has automatically connected to Bamboo, which is the build system, and populated this piece of this key piece of information. So this empowers developers to be aware of uh, the brand, the source branch, and uh, in the scenario where the source branch might be failing the build, then uh, ideally you might want to fix that before you create a feature branch or a bug fix branch out of it. But in this case, since it is passing the build. Uh, we, we, we want to proceed with creating the bug fix branch. Uh, the other task that it has assisted us with is the naming convention of the branch. Uh, enforcing naming convention for version control tools is a major challenge and there, are, there have been various approaches for it. Um, but with Git Essentials, we can see that uh, Stash is already suggesting us the name for the branch. And even if we glance at the name that it has suggested, we can tell that uh, since it's prefixed by bug fix, this is a bug fix branch. Uh, from the name of the branch, we can also deduce that this is related to the issue TIS-73. And it also has a descriptive uh, name in the end because it says that this is related to fixing the background color of the landing page. So as you can see, um, Stash has already done a lot of this for the developer. So for most cases, they don't need to modify the name of the branch. They can simply click on create branch. So now uh, once we click on create branch, we are within stash. Uh, we can see that the current branch that has been selected is the bug fix TIS 73 branch. Next, we'd like to make the code changes uh, to fix this issue. Now, you have various options based on the Git desktop client you're using. Uh, but in our case, we will utilize uh, Atlassian Source Tree, which is another product from Atlassian and is an excellent uh, Git desktop client. And it also integrates right into Stash. So if I want to check out the code for this particular Buffix branch in order to make the changes, I can click on this menu right here and I can select the option to check out the branch in source tree. So I click on check out. And then locally, um, I can click on open in finder uh, to access the working copy of this particular branch. And then next, I will proceed to make a simple CSS file change in my code editor. So I save the code and then I can go back to source tree and next I will commit this change. In my commit message, I will mention that this commit is related to TIS-73. I will say I changed um, background color. And then the other advantage of using source tree over other uh, Git desktop clients is not only can I commit and make the changes locally, but by clicking on this checkbox, I get the option to immediately push these changes to stash. So once I click on commit, now if I go back to stash, uh, I can go to a section called commits, which shows me a list of commits associated with this branch. And here we can see that um, our commit for changing the background color is visible. And if I'd like to get a more detailed view of the change that was submitted, I can click on the commit, which will show me the code diff or the code uh, change associated with this. Next, I'd like to submit a code review request in the form of the pull request feature in Stash. Uh, so that I, uh, the review peer review can be done as well as I'd like 
to request for this change to be merged to the master branch. So I can go to the pull request section and I will click on create a pull request. I will select my source branch as the bug fix branch we just created. Um, I will select the reviewer as Mitch. And then I will proceed to create the pull request. And you can see that it makes it seamless to create a code review within Stash. Uh, we can fill out the description. We can add one or more reviewers. And that's it. So very quickly, we can engage in creating a code review. Now, while I wait for Mitch to go over my code review request, uh, I can point out some other key information that uh, this screen has. On this section right here, we can see that it shows us that there is some build information associated with this bug fix branch. So if I click on this, um, it shows that a build was generated for this particular bug fix branch. Um, again, this is made possible because we are using Atlassian Bamboo where we have configured it to generate builds not only for the master branch but also for any individual uh, feature or bug fix branch. So Bamboo will automatically detect any new changes in Git, including any new branches created by developers, and it will run a build on that. So what this empowers us to do is, uh, as a reviewer, we already know the build status of the branch before we make a decision as to whether uh, we should merge this or not. Also, I have the option to engage in conversation by going to the comment section. So I can either post a comment on the overall changes in the overview section, or I can go to diff. And I can see that Mitch has posted a couple of comments on various lines. So Mitch posted a comment on line two saying that display cannot be blue. So I can reply that this will be fixed. And I can also add mention Mitch. And then I can also reply to Mitch on another comment. So as you can see, uh, drop in teams regardless of whether they are working from the same location or across multiple time zones in different locations they can engage uh, seamlessly in this kind of conversation uh, which will help boost the collaboration um, and lead to a more efficient drop in process um, next uh, we will wait for mitch to make a decision as to whether he'd like to merge the these changes or not and once these changes are, so now when I refresh it, I can see that Mitch has accepted the change as well as the changes have been merged to master. If I uh, go back to commits and if I select the master branch, I can see that the particular change has been merged. Now, uh, if we want to seamlessly jump back to uh, Jira, I can click on the Jira issue key which gives me a brief overview of the issue. Uh, it shows that the current status of the issue is in, in progress. So uh, I'd like to transition this to ready for testing. So I can do that from within Jira itself. And if I want to get back to uh, Jira, I can click on the Jira issue key again. And I am back in Jira. And if I want to go back to the Jira Agile view, I can click on the option to view this issue in the Agile board. Uh, so I can see my issue TIS73 is in the code review state. I can select the issue. On the right hand side, now you can see the drop-in panel has been populated with various pieces of information. So if I click on commits, it shows the code commits that it, uh, it basically obtained by connecting to Stash. I can click on pull request. It shows me that there was one pull request created for this particular change and it was successfully merged two minutes ago. I can click on the build information. It shows that uh, there were multiple builds uh, that resulted from this particular code change because in Bamboo, I have set up very extensive build plans which run a variety of different kinds of automated tests ranging from integration functional uh, all the way through even browser automation tests um, 
And if I now see uh, that it also shows me that this particular change has automatically been deployed to the QA environment. If I click on the deployment information, I can see that the status of this change is it is deployed to QA as a part of release number eight. Uh, if I click on the release link, now it has brought me seamlessly to Bamboo, uh, which is the continuous integration and build automation tool. But uh, the other feature, major feature it has is it also manages your release in a very convenient manner. So for example, right now we are viewing the details of release number eight. Uh, we can see some details on the right hand side. We can see the that release eight was created two minutes ago. Uh, we can see the artifacts for the release was populated by build number 34 of this particular build plan. Uh, I can also gain traceability into the changes that are part of this release by clicking on the commit section. Uh, in the commit section, I can see that there are, uh, it shows me the list of code changes. Uh, I can go to the issue section. It shows me that there is one issue associated with this particular release. And uh, the other thing I can also do is if I'd like to compare this release with an older re release, for example, uh, if I select release one, now I can compare release eight with release one when I select, uh, click on the compare option. Now it gives me uh, the list of all of the issues that were involved in between release one through release eight. I can also go to the commit section uh, which gives me a list of all of the core changes that it obtained from Git and Stash and gives me a full list of those. And the other option I have is um, I, uh, I can also promote this particular release to other environments up, uh, apart from QA. For example, I can click on production and with a single click, I get the option to promote this particular release to production as well. And uh, if I want to go back to uh, Jira, again, it's a very unified user experience because I can simply click on the issue key, which will take me back to Jira. And then I also have the option to get back to the Agile board. So as you can see, uh, we have the, uh, Jira acting as a single source of truth for obtaining the full status of our drop and task, not only at the planning level, but also getting all this information from Git, uh, connecting to Bamboo to obtain the build results, the automated test results, and also uh, letting us know what is the status of in terms of deployment. So it, it tells us uh, that the, the particular environment where this change is deployed to as well. So I think that's about it in terms of the demo portion. Um, so next, I think we can open up uh, for questions. So in GoToWebinar, uh, I see that there are a couple of questions already posted. So I'll go through some of those. Uh, we have a couple of minutes still. So let me select some questions. And also, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to post those. Uh, we'll try to address as many of those as possible in the remaining time we have. And if we run out of time, we will try to get in touch with you individually on some changes. Okay, so one of the questions asked is, do you need to create the branch through Stash to be able to see the branch in Jira? Or can Jira notice branches made on the command line? So that's a very good question. Um, so the answer is yes, you don't need to be, uh, you, do, you don't necessarily need to create the branch from Jira. Um, if you create the branch on Jira, it makes the process convenient. Um, but that is not a necessity. In fact, uh, the feature to create a branch from Jira was introduced uh, fairly recently. Um, but the integration points already existed between Git Stash and Jira. So the primary requirement is if you have a branch you are creating in Git, uh, regardless of which tool you're using, as long as you, you include a reference to the Jira issue key in your commit message, uh, Jira will and Stash will automatically link it with the appropriate code changes and the Jira issue. 
So the only minimum requirement is your commit message needs to include a reference to the issue key and uh, Jira will figure out the rest. And then the other question we have is how long will it take to set up the build environment uh, we have from scratch? So uh, we've demonstrated various tools like Jira, Stash, I Agile, and Bamboo. Um, so the question, well, the uh, in terms of how long it, it would take, um, it would depend on whether you're using the on-demand, uh, which is the cloud version of uh, all these Atlassian tools, or if you are running them uh, behind the firewall yourself. On on-demand, uh, as soon as you provision um, any of these applications, uh, it's these features are already present out of the box. They are already linked with each other. And if you are not running Atlassian tools on on-demand and you're hosting them yourself, uh, even then, uh, the setup itself is pretty seamless for all of the individual tools. And it, 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 it's a fairly straightforward process to link them to each other. So overall, it's, it's not a very time-consuming process just to get the basic tools up and running. Okay, uh, let me go to the next question. So the next question is... Uh, is there a management dashboard reporting view? Well, uh, you can have a customized uh, Jira dashboard. Um, so for example, I have a sample dashboard for this particular project where it has populated uh, information regarding the status of the sprint. Uh, it also gives me some statistics regarding the issues, the various assignees and reporters. And then uh, the other kind of uh, detailed dashboard you, you can access in Bamboo is you can go to the deployment project section, uh, which can show you the status of the deployment of all of your projects. So, so, so from this screen, I can see the various projects, uh, the various environments, the various releases. And then, like I demonstrated earlier, you can drill into the details of a particular release and get information about that as well. So, so with the combination of the uh, dashboard in Jira and then more detailed information regarding the release information in Bamboo, uh, that more or less provides all of the information you would need in terms of how stakeholders can track all of these. And again, the reoccurring theme is you can, in fact, stay within Jira and Jira Agile to get a lot of this information without necessarily having to dive in unless you need more fine-grained details. So the other question, a uh, really good question asked is, does Bamboo know to create a new CI project for new branches made on the command line? Uh, excellent question again. So um, if I go back to Bamboo, the particular change we just made is related to a Bamboo build plan called Whopper Toolbox. And I can click on the build details, like build number 34 resulted because of the code change that happened in the master branch. But uh, if I go back to the Bamboo dashboard, I can click on this icon, which basically shows me that there are some plans related to the various branches in this uh, in this project, if I click on this, you will see that it detected the bug fix branch that we created. Now, in terms of whether uh, it will detect it, uh, if you are creating Git branches from the command line, then the answer would be yes. Um, in Bamboo, you simply configure it to detect uh, any branches that are created in the project, or you can also define that uh, only automatically set up the build plan based on the naming convention followed by the branch. But either way, there is no stringent requirement that this feature is available if you are creating the branch only from within Jira or Stash itself. So you get the benefit of all of these features regardless of, of the kind of Git client that you're using. And then, um, the other question is, what is the effort level for upgrading the various Atlassian tools if we host uh, the tools? Well, uh, in terms of um, 
setting up different Atlassian tools, uh, like I mentioned earlier, fairly straightforward process. Uh, upgrades are also pretty seamless. Um, sometimes the challenge might arise in terms of the level of customizations that you might have done on a particular Atlassian tool. Uh, so with more number of customizations, uh, it does require a bit longer in terms of how quickly you can upgrade because you would need to test some of these customizations before you can safely upgrade. Same holds true for the number of add-ons that you're using because uh, you need to wait for the plugin vendors to basically update the add-ons for uh, newer versions of the tools. And usually uh, most of the active add-ons are pretty well maintained and they catch up with the uh, release cycle from Atlassian. And then uh, the other question was, uh, where do you configure the auto deployments? Um, and in terms of how you configure the deployments, uh, if I go back to the Bamboo dashboard, uh, in the Bamboo dashboard, uh, by default, we can see the build projects, but there is also a section called deployment project. In the deployment project, uh, you can see the various environments that have been defined for each project. And if I'd like to set up an automated deployment trigger, uh, so for instance, we already have that uh, automated deployment trigger for the QA environment uh, because we just saw that release number eight was automatically deployed to it. So if we edit the details of this environment, there is a, a section called trigger. In the trigger, uh, right now the current trigger is, it is automatically uh, triggering deployment to this environment after a successful build plan. And over here you can also provide details on uh, which branch it should monitor for changes uh, before it does the deployment. You also have an additional trigger uh, that you can define based on the schedule. So instead of an automated uh, build, you can also say that schedule a deployment based on a particular schedule that you have. So this is how you would uh, define the automated deployment trigger. Okay. And then um, uh, going back to one of the questions from earlier, uh, the, in terms of how long it would take to set up the tools, uh, installing the tools themselves, uh, pretty much you could do, do within a uh, couple of hours. And then you can set up the integration points as well. Uh, it would depend on the number of tools that you'd like to utilize. But typically, uh, out of the box setup, you can perform uh, within a week or less. Um, and let me see. And I think that's about it in terms of the questions that we have so far. Um, so, okay, so there was one last question in terms of uh, what is the suggestion of how we can host the tools? Um, now, that would depend on the individual needs of your organization. Um, if you are a very small team and are not comfortable with, uh, with setting up these tools and upgrading them and maintaining them, uh, you have the option to go with the Atlassian cloud hosting service. Uh, but the limitation of the Atlassian hosting service is uh, there is a limited degree of customization that you can perform. Um, in terms of the solution that Attic offers, uh, we have a solution called Code Factory. Uh, and in the Code Factory solution, we, ma we basically manage the hosting of the various Atlassian tools uh, and also assist with any degree of customization needed. Um, and then um, you also have the option of hosting yourself, but then uh, in that case, you would need a more degree of specialization uh, in terms of, of choosing the right kind of infrastructure, sizing the instances uh, to have the right requirements, and then uh, possessing the expertise to maintain them. So uh, I think that's it for the questions we have. Um, Thanks everyone for joining. Um, if you'd like to get in touch, you can go to our website uh, at adtech.com. Um, and if you ha have any specific questions on how we can help you implement any of the solutions that we have demonstrated today, uh, 
you can also email sales at adtech.com and uh, we will also keep you posted on any future webinars that we will uh, do on on uh, similar topics as today and uh, yep thanks everyone for joining